Hey guys and welcome to a guide in Valhalla on how to play Orlog and how to especially win at playing Orlog, which is why you're here. Although quite confusing at first, it's actually quite a simple game. So you start off by picking your god's favors. You can have three gods on your side here and you unlock more by defeating people in Orlog around the world. Each of these has different types of effects or things that they can do depending on how many power chips you have on your table, which we'll talk about later. Every game starts with a coin toss heads or tails, and you hardly ever actually win this toss for some reason. Now before we talk strategy, I want to talk about what's on the table at first. So you'll see there's 15 stones next to your bowl on the left side there. Those 15 stones represent your health bar. When those stones are deleted or killed or damaged, and they're all removed from your table there, you lose the game. Alternatively, if you kill the 15 stones on your enemy side, you win the game. On the right hand side of your bowl, there are these kind of little figures, these little wooden figures. These are the gods that you picked right at the beginning of the match there. You'll see your opponent has three because you're able to have three. Unfortunately, I only have two because I haven't played this game that much. And you unlock more of these gods by defeating more people in Orlog across the world. Each of these gods has a unique effect that they can either deal damage to the enemy's health bar or bring back health to yours depending on the power cubes on the table, which we'll talk about in a bit. Now let's talk about the dice below the guards on the right side. So every turn you'll get to throw six dice and you'll get to pick the faces on them to kind of select for your lineup of six. Your opponent will be doing the exact same and you'll kind of face these two armies together to see what the results are. There are five different types of dice. There is the two damaging dice, which is the arrow and the X, which deal one damage each if they manage to hit your enemy's health bar. So they can minus one stone each from your enemy's health bar, depending on how many you get. So if you have like two arrows, that's two health. If you have two axes, that's two health minus from the enemy's team. But you can use defenders, the helmet and the shield. The helmet defends against axes and the shield defends against arrows. So if your enemy has a shield and you have an arrow, your arrow is going to hit that shield and it's, nothing's going to happen. You're not going to deal damage. Both of those units are just going to be kind of removed off of the table. If you have two arrows and your enemy only has one shield, one of your arrows is going to be negated by the shield and the other arrow is going to do damage. So you have to kind of like line them up like that. So alternatively, if you have two warriors and your opponent only has one axe, their axe is going to hit your warrior and your other warrior is going to do nothing. So it's going to end up being a waste. There is a final piece here that is kind of weird because it is a hand. Now these hands are able to pick a power chip from your enemy's side there. Now the one thing you're going to really want to do you'll notice that some of the dice have like no border and some of them have this like orange dashed border in a square border around the dice the ones with the square border will actually give you a free piece of power so every time you roll your dice you're going to want to try pick out the ones that have that border because those will give you power and you can use those powers for your gods to deal damage or heal yourself with your gods powers depending on how many power chips you have all right, so I'm going to play a game and I'm going to narrate what's happening. So first we're in this roll phase where your opponent, because he rolled a heads or tails, gets to roll first. He picks which dice he wants to keep. We're going to roll our dice for the first time here. We're going to pick which dice we want. I don't want any of those, so I'm going to hit spacebar to roll again. We only get three rolls. Keep this in mind. Now I'm doing my second roll. I'm going to pick out the two pieces with that orange border because those are going to give me two pieces of power. And I'm going to click spacebar to roll the lost four. And then because this is my third roll, I don't get to pick out because that's the third roll. Everything that you have in the bowl gets onto the table here and you can see it goes into this resolution phase where it will first give us our power chips and then his two arrows hitting my two shields my axe hitting his health bar my arrow hitting his shield he had three shields and then he uses a hand to steal my point and I use a hand to steal his point because he has the coin he gets the first hand to kind of roll there and now it goes into a roll phase so we're gonna do the roll phase yet again none of us use God's favor because none of us had power now we have power you'll see once we get to the end stage before the resolution stage we'll actually get to use a God's power so we're rolling dice here the three rolls I don't want any of those here. I'm going to roll these lost two dice for the final time, and hopefully I get something good. And there we go. We're going to get six pieces of power here. And now we'll go into a god's favor kind of stage here, and I can select which guard I want to use. So I collect a god here. I don't want to use a god because I want to collect more power later on and do a heavy attack. For now, I'm saving up on power collecting. I managed to lose one health bar on my side there. We're right even now. Steal two pieces of power. He steals one of mine. Right now, I have about 12 power, which is quite good. So we're going to go into another roll phase. We're going to roll as our dice. He obviously goes first because he freaking pulled the freaking coin toss at the beginning. Uh, none of these pieces work for me. I'm going to roll. He's going to roll and then I'm going to roll again and hopefully I get pieces that have a power chip border around them. So I'm going to take these three right over here 
And mm, yeah, I'm going to take these as well. Let's get some damage out there. So there's two arrows, three axes, a lot of opportunity for doing damage. So right now we're going to use our God's favor. So I'm going to select my Thor here. This is the one you start out with in the game. I've got enough power. I'm going to use him here and I'm going to do the 12 power for eight damage. Now make sure you actually have 12 power by the time the, the phase ends here because you actually do collect your chips or lose your chips before your God actually works. So if you don't have the power at the time, your power doesn't actually work. I calculated that I'm going to have enough here. I'm going to do a lot of damage here and I'm going to throw this out here. My God is going to activate right now, right after we've kind of calculated the army is kind of set up here and boom, he only has three stones left while I have 12 stones left. So that's pretty good. Now we're going to go again and we're going to select the ones with the power and then we're going to roll again for our second turn here. So we're going to be, we're going to be all right like this and we're going to let our opponent do a roll. He's going to select whatever he selects. He's going to select the power one as well. We're going to roll our two dice. Um, not really happy with this. I um, think I'll just roll on that one. And he's going to roll. And he's going to select that one. And this is our final roll, so it doesn't matter what we do. Whatever we roll here stays in the in the pot there. So that's okay. I'm all right with that. And let's see how this lines up. So we're in the God's Favor stage here. Let's see what I can do here. Looks like I'm going to get enough power. If you calculate, he's going to take two from me. I'm going to get five over there. Five plus my seven. Looks like I'm going to have to use um, four instead because I'm not going to have eight at the end. So I'm going to go for four. Four power because my final power is going to be seven. I'm not going to be able to do the eight damage one or the eight power one. So pick the one that has two there because he's going to steal the two power chips from me. So you see here, I'm going to get my five there and I'm going to take the two from him and he's going to unfortunately steal the two from me, putting me back down at seven. So now I'm going to do my God's power attack and this is for two damage. Boom, he has one health left and we're back into a roll phase. And now he's going to roll first because obviously the stupid coin toss and we're going to roll, pick the heck, I think. I think it should be fine. We can actually just click everything here. I want to do just damage. We just need to do one damage. So I left the hand there because we don't need to steal power right now. I'm not going to get enough power. He has a lot of power. I got to focus of killing him before he uses all that power. So I got to kill him with all my damage types here. So I've got arrows, I've got axes, everything. Literally, all I have to do is one damage and he loses before he gets his chance to use his gods because he's going to use his gods. I'm telling you right now, he's going to use, see there, he's going to try heal himself for every single piece of power that he has there. He's going to heal quite a lot if he gets that off. But luckily, I'm going to be able to kill him with one of my exes because I got three of them before he's able to do so. And that's how you win a game of Orlog. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to play Orlog and how to win at playing Orlog. And I'll see you guys in a future video. Thank you so much for watching.